This video is sponsored by Artlist, the place I go to find royalty-free music for my videos. I've recently finished a challenge of running 5 kilometers every day for 30 days and I filmed all of the runs using a GoPro. My DSLR is too heavy and flashy to run with and a phone, well the footage turns out too shaky. So I use a GoPro. In this video I'm going to give you some ideas of different angles and shots that you can aim for when it comes to filming yourself with a GoPro. My hope is that this is going to make the editing process a lot more enjoyable for yourself as well as give some variety to your viewers. Now, I'm not sure when you're watching this video, but GoPro comes out with a new model every single year. So as long as your GoPro has image stabilization, then this video is relevant to you. For a point of reference, I have a GoPro Hero 9. I turn it on by clicking the power button. Now, when I'm out on a run, Usually, that's what I want to do, run, <laughs> not make a big deal of myself for me. So I personally prefer not to take any accessories, no chest mounts or selfie sticks. You're welcome to try those out, but I find that they draw a lot of attention to yourself and they also take a while to set up. So I like to make filming as easy as possible. So I find when I just have the GoPro, well, it makes filming a lot more approachable and I'm more inclined to get the shot as opposed to thinking, oh, this is too much of a mission and then missing it. If you find yourself thinking too much about everything that you need, you may find yourself getting lost in the detail and then not even heading out for a run in the first place. But if you really like to get POV footage, then stick around to the end of this video because I'll tell you the accessory I use to get what I think is the best POV footage. But I don't know if this is interesting to everyone, so I'll leave that at the end of the video. Check out the timestamps if you want to check that out. But for those of you who are completely new to filming yourself running, I still think it's worthwhile sticking to the end to check that out. Because when it comes to making a video, some POV footage, mm, it's pretty good. All right, so let's look at what settings I change. You don't have to use the same settings I do, but if you check out my five kilometers every day for 30 days video, I think you'll see that I got more than enough from just changing these few settings. The resolution is in 4K. If you find it a bit of a struggle to edit with 4K, then watch my video where I teach you how to edit 4K footage easily using proxies. I'll link that somewhere for you on the screen or in the description. I go for 30 frames per second. The lens I change to linear and horizon leveling. And then the last thing I change is the color. I like to shoot in flat. That's because I like to color correct and color grade. If you want to try that, you can check out my video where I show you how to do that. But if color correction and color grading seems a little bit too daunting, don't worry, use the GoPro color setting. It's more than fine. In fact, I saw a friend's footage and I asked her, oh my goodness, did she use a light or something fancy when it came to her color? And she said, no, she actually just used GoPro color. So it's a great place to start and a great setting to use if you don't think you're gonna have time to color correct and color grade in the first place. <laughs> now, you can start filming yourself even before you hit the road. You can film the process of you putting on your socks, your shoes, your watch, or whatever helps you set the tone for what's to come. Alternatively, if you're running from a specific location, you could film yourself getting into the car. Perhaps you can film yourself driving to the location, arriving at the location, maybe creating a bit of an establishing shot showing off what's so special about the space that you're choosing to run from. And then maybe it's a cool idea to show yourself tightening up your laces or putting on your final items of clothing. But now let's talk about the run. It could be a cool shot to start with yourself running over your GoPro. You would have to run back and fetch it, but it's a cool starting shot. I feel that this shot is always pretty aesthetic, so use it plenty of times in your run, where you run perhaps over your GoPro or turn it so that you're running away from it. You could then do a top-down angle, showing your shoes hitting the terrain. If you can see your shadow, film that. When it comes to editing, more is more, and you wanna give yourself a lot of options. And then, I usually am on the lookout for anything that could act as a tripod. 
I place my GoPro on anything that looks stable and I use the best shots from that when it comes to the edit. Yes, this does involve a lot of backwards and forwards running, but the setup is pretty simple. You can run past the GoPro, towards the GoPro, or from the GoPro. Your surroundings will determine what you're able to do. You can also capture yourself by angling the GoPro higher than you are, maybe to your side, directly in front of you, as well as having the GoPro fairly low and pointing up at your face. So now that you've got an idea of some shots, it helps to go into your run being aware of the different shots you can take and then spacing them up evenly between the course of your run. Now, if you remember, I said I shoot in 30 frames per second, but what I love about the GoPro Hero 9 is it has that snail icon that you can press on if you want to add a little bit of slow-mo. So if you see a beautiful flower or an interesting sighting, activating slow-mo helps to break the pace. This should be a lot more interesting to an audience as opposed to holding your GoPro directly in front of you and just running like this for the entire duration of your run. People only see you and they don't get to see a lot more of the environment around you and adding angles that does produce a lot more variety and you know what they say, variety is the spice of life. <laughs> Okay, now if POV is your main goal, well, this is the best accessory in my opinion, the bike mount. And yes, you will look completely ridiculous, but when it comes to POV footage, I mean, it's very hard to compete with a bike mount. Now for me, the magic happens in the edits. You can add your clips to a piece of music that fits the mood you're going for. A huge thanks to Artlist for sponsoring this portion of the video. As many of you know, I use music from Artlist for my videos. Finding soundtracks for my videos is one of my favorite parts of the process because a song has the power to evoke all types of emotion. For example, see how different this GoPro footage comes across based on the song I pick. I'm going to select a song based off mood. Let's choose powerful. I can download the mp3 version of the song super quickly and then add my footage on top. Okay, let's choose the video theme option now and go for something a little more road trip inspired. So based on how you felt on your run, you should be able to easily search for the soundtrack on Artlist. Artlist has a monthly plan that caters for creators who are looking for an affordable option for royalty free music for their videos. Check out the link in my description to learn more. But let me know in the comments if there are any angles that you use that I haven't spoken about today. But give this video a thumbs up if you found it valuable. And I will link my GoPro playlist for you in the end screen. Videos there start from as basic as how to charge your GoPro and then they get really exciting. I teach you how to do a time lapse or a hyperlapse. Those are pretty cool, especially if you want to incorporate them into your running videos as well. And then we also touch on color grading and color correction. So you're welcome to check out that playlist after this video. But that's all from me guys. I hope you have the most fun filming yourself on your run and I look forward to seeing you in one of my next videos. Take care. Bye-bye. <laughs>